The first thing most people think of when the Dark Souls series is brought up is, oh, those are the games that are really hard. And if you're good at the games, then you probably think, oh, those are the games that people think are hard. Either way, the series has a reputation of difficulty, which leads to some natural parallels with retro gaming. The games don't really tell you what to do, they have no problem punishing you for your mistakes, but most important of all, they give you an incredible sense of accomplishment if you're able to make it past some of the obstacles. Now, as popular as this series is, it still has plenty of its own detractors, often saying stuff like, I've got enough stress in my personal life that I don't need to be piling onto that with the video games I choose to play. Sometimes negative comments on the game are typically met with baseline get good responses, and while it is true that the game has a learning curve, nobody is going to be convinced to play a game by telling them that they simply suck at it. Plenty of fans will be able to provide much more elaborate reasons for the game's appeal, as it's not as simple as feeling proud for beating a game considered difficult. The Dark Souls games have very clear ways of rewarding the player for thoughtful, smart gameplay, and this is what hooks players in. Not to mention a lot of very artistic enemy designs, cool atmosphere, variety of weapons, and all the other stuff that makes video games good. The very methodical way you need to progress through the game, and how the game rewards you for doing so, harkens back to the days of retro gaming. Now sure, a lot of retro games have difficulty that could just be considered flat out cheap, but the retro games people consider to be the best usually reward creative thinking similar to the way Dark Souls games do. You can't just charge ahead thinking that enough aggression will allow you to get past whatever lies ahead. You need to stop, think, plan what you're going to do, try new things, and learn from mistakes. This is what allows you to track noticeable improvement when it comes to a certain level, certain boss, or just your ability to play the game overall. Most other modern games that were around during the time of Dark Souls are games that hold your hand, tell you where to go, have almost no punishment for dying, offer to lower the difficulty if you have any sort of trouble, and basically just make sure you reach the end of the game. Let me tell you, Dark Souls does not care if you make it to the end of the game. Just like many retro games do not care if you make it to the end. And let me be clear, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with games that do want to make sure you reach the end. Remember, I'm the guy that says video games are whatever personally maximizes your enjoyment. But what I am saying is that it makes for a very different kind of experience. With that said, you can see how games like Dark Souls would appeal to people who like the challenge of older retro games. Obviously, not all retro gamers love Dark Souls, but there's definitely some crossover. And when I say retro gamers, in this context, I'm mainly talking about the NES and Genesis slash Super Nintendo era of games, when difficulty was a hallmark. Dark Souls' influence on the gaming industry has been undeniable, and I'm not just talking about the phrase praise the sun, but how it has influenced the way games are made. Heck, it's practically created its own subgenre of games, often referred to as Souls-like. Plus, people constantly say stuff like, this is the Dark Souls of whatever. But more important than anything, in my mind as a retro gamer, it has made difficulty in video games more accepted. And while difficulty will always turn some gamers away, it has actually become marketable to have difficulty be a feature of your video game now. At a time when retro gaming is on the rise, I can't help but see the benefit of this trend. If difficulty can become more accepted by the video game playing user base overall, it opens the door for more people to give retro games a chance, or perhaps even seek them out due to their parallels with the type of challenge presented in Dark Souls. This idea comforts me because I feel like one of the main things that deters gamers from retro games is the difficulty. When you're sucking at a video game, it's usually not very fun, and oftentimes if gamers run into a wall so early on in a game, they have no built-up enjoyment of that game that would incentivize them to invest more time in order to get past those obstacles. While most retro games do have a first stage that is easier than later parts of the game, gamers can still run into a wall pretty quickly if they're unfamiliar with the game. To stand any chance at enjoying these games, you need to have an expectation going in that you're going to be challenged from the start. 
much like with Dark Souls. All right, so to wrap things up, I feel I should point out that I'm not saying I think everyone should play Dark Souls, but it is for some folks, and if it has served as a gateway to retro gaming for some, then that's a win in my book. Because ultimately, I just want as many people as possible playing retro games. All right, so for this week's question, I'd like to hear what your experience with the series is. Have you played the games, and if not, what are your reasons for not playing them? I'm sure you all have some interesting answers as usual, so go ahead and leave those comments down below, and I will see you in the next video.